Welcome back to Rediscovering Childhood Podcast. I'm Mireya, your host, and today I welcome Ruben, the entertainer, to the studio. He is a magician, comedian, entertainer, TV presenter, and now he's also an educator because he has created three incredibly engaging shows for primary school children, covering very relevant topics such as bullying, the impact of social media, exercise and well-being and so much more. And he educates children combining his skills as an entertainer and comedian to make them aware of the impact that the modern world has on them. Join us for a really uplifting, powerful and inspiring episode to discover how he explains very complex topics to children and how he built his career following his passion so nothing can stop him. You might even laugh too. Let's get started. So a few weeks ago I was lucky enough to attend an amazing show at my kids school. They launched the Go Phone Free campaign and they celebrated because it was a great celebration with a really good show uh, with the amazing Ruben the Entertainer. I was lucky enough to go see the show and I was fascinated how he combines so much learning, entertainment, fun and laughter for all kids and adults and we're so lucky to have him here today. Welcome to the podcast. How are we doing? How are you? Very good. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> are we going to laugh today? Uh, hopefully, hopefully. Okay. Uh, a dry talk for, you know, for an hour. That's not what you want. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby the Entertainer, come in here and bore you to tears. Yeah, that'd no, be good, yeah. <laughs> that won't happen. Um, so tell us about the show and how did you come up? Because I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant how you managed to pitch so much such abstract con concepts for the children that can be quite complicated to understand for such small children through so much fun and engagement. Well, thanks very much. I'm delighted that you kind of enjoyed it as well. I, my goal is to try and get everyone in the room to enjoy it, so that you know, the kids, the teachers, everyone, and this was not my idea. I can't claim any of the responsibility for this. Uh, literally, I am a children's entertainer. I've done it for years, so literally 42 years now. Go to birthday parties, that sort of thing. And I found over the years that I used to do magic and then I found that I preferred sort of making people laugh. And when the trick broke, I just didn't bother re replacing it. I just got rid of it and I have less and less equipment. So the show is just me coming out and doing funny things, chatting to kids. Obviously then COVID struck a few years ago, which was fantastic for the business. As you can imagine, live entertainment just disappeared overnight. And that was not great for a few years. But then when that came back, things started to pick up a bit more. And then just literally about a year and a half ago, nearly two years at this point, um, I, I just thought I'll go into the local school where I would be the nine-year-old and the 12-year-old, go in and just say, would you like a free show? Just magic, comedy, entertainment for the 700 pupils. We'll do two shows, you know, 350 and 350, and I give out some business cards, a bit of business like that. So the principal was like, well, that's very nice. Thanks very much. So I did the show. So at the end, she, you know, she brought me to the office to say, thanks so much for doing that. And she says, that was wonderful. She says, now don't take this the wrong way. So I was like, oh no, what's I, did I say something wrong? What's going on? And she said, you're really good at keeping their attention. And I was like, well, thanks very much, but I'm, that's not an insult. Why would she say? She goes, she said, but you could do something useful with it. So I was like, okay. And she said, I, I know that laughing is very important and we have, we have well-being weeks and we'll book you in to come and do the show. That's great. But she says, you hold their attention and this like junior infants watching you for an hour with sixth class sitting in the same room all watching you for an hour. And said, we don't very usually get that. You could definitely do something. So I was like, like, what do you mean? What sort of message? And she goes, well, I specifically want a message about social media. And I said, I think what aimed for maybe older kids, junior infants are a little bit young, but sort of third, fourth, fifth, sixth class, something about social media, how addictive it is, the effect it has on you, that sort of thing. And But I want to be interactive. We've had people come in here and do talks before and they said, oh, it's going to be very interactive. And then we watched them doing a show. The kids sit on the benches for an hour and they put their hands up twice in an hour. And she says, that's not interactive. That's just a lecture. And they're saying all the same stuff that the teachers say. So the pupils are going, we know all this stuff because it's very on curriculum. It's yeah. very, which of course you have to do. You can't be talking about anything off the top of your head. But it's just, it's not entertaining. And these are not entertainers. They're perfectly professional. They're teachers coming in and they're saying stuff on a script. But it's that we just want a fun sort of show. So I was like, that sounds impossible. I said, I don't know. I said, like, I could certainly come in and be funny, whatever. But I said, also, it would be months of work to to write something like that, you know, for like an hour in length. And she goes, yeah, we want to be. I don't want a 10 minute talk. I want like a full experience. So I said, like, I, I don't know what I would charge you to do that because the money, you wouldn't have the money to pay me to work for that yeah. on three months. And she said, no, no. She said, if you can make this work, every school in the country will book you for it. She said, I'll make sure, I'll make sure I WhatsApp everyone, I'm in different groups and everything. So I was like, okay. So I was talking to my wife and she was like, are you crazy? You have to do this. And I was like, it's so much work. And she said, I know, I know, but like, 
you're excited about that. I'm, I'm a total nerd. I love gadgets. I love technology, anything like that. But I'm also really concerned about how it affects kids and stuff. And also, like, my son was probably the only child in the entire school who didn't have a mobile phone in sixth class. So that's, like, unheard of nowadays. But we were like, no, no, you get your phone at the end of sixth class. Mm-hmm. On this particular date, we told him that since first class. And we're like, that's just how it goes. And, he, you know, once or twice he asked about it. And then he was like, well, that's just how it goes. That's, that's it. So it never came up. It was never an issue. It was never a thing. And he was happy enough to go with that. And so that was it. So I put the head down, started coming up with the ideas, and then I liked the idea of uh, like a one word title for a show. That's kind of cool to one sort of thing. So I just called it Hacked. And the idea was that people think, oh, it's about hacking into a phone or hacking into an account. And of course, when they sit there for the hour, they slowly do- it dawns them that basically the phones are essentially hacking the humans because they get in there, they sort of access your brain, they manipulate your emotions, and do all this sort of stuff. But how, like, how on earth do I get that across to a nine-year-old? I could talk to yourself, I could talk to a parent, and I can get the idea across. But how do you make this appealing to a nine-year-old? Because they're like, I like looking at a screen, and this is great, and this is awesome. And ultimately, no matter what I say, a kid is going to use a phone as much as their parent allows them to use the phone. So if I say, you should only use it for 10 minutes a day, but my mum says I can use it for five hours a day. They're like, we don't care, Baldy, you're very funny, but we're going to use the phone for five hours a day. So I was like, well, that's no use just giving a lecture. So I have to sort of say, look, if you notice these things that uh, that affects you, and you may not know because you're quite young, but as you get older, you'll notice things. Here's things you could spot, watch out for, and the little tricks that they use in manipulating your emotions and stuff. So anyway, I, I spent three months preparing it, and I said to the principal, I said, look, can I do the show twice because I've never done this before? I'll do an hour, and then give me an hour to sit down and go through, my, pull the notes apart, scribble things out, all that sort of stuff. I even wrote a timer down the side of the page so that if I look at it and the number 17 is there, I should be 17 minutes into the show. Mm-hmm. If I'm 23 minutes into the show, I'm going too fast. If I'm five minutes in, I have to skip over material. I have to bits of the show that I can just drop out because they're not essential, but, but I need them if I'm, if I'm going too quickly. So I did that and uh, edited a whole ton of stuff and the show was way too long the first time. It was like an hour and 40 minutes, something crazy. But the kids had great fun. They really enjoyed it. Uh, but I was like, no, that's way too long. I don't, I'm not here to feature film and not mm-hmm. making so do the thing and then cut it down a bit and now it's down to like a tight sort of 55 minutes one hour because i've done it in about 90 schools so it gets better and you take this bit out and you go oh that that's kind of good and also i have three sort of rules that i have about the show so number one is it has to be entertaining and which sounds like a daft thing to prioritize but i think that when you walk in the door and i'm now going to schools for the second time as soon as you walk in the kids don't know what you're going to talk about, but they're like, oh, this is going to be brilliant. And they're excited to see you. They don't know whether it's about bullying or well-being or what the topic is, but they're excited. So that's great because that opens the door for you straight away. And the second thing is I want it to be sort of relevant to sort of 9 to 12-year-olds. The well-being show that I do is for maybe younger kids as well. Um, and junior and senior friends would just be too young. I tried experimenting with that age group with a friend who is a principal of the school. And we tried to experiment there. And we both agreed, yeah, they're a little bit too young. So that's fine. Just got to try things out to see how it works. And trial and error, I did that. And um, yeah, so that's that's kind of it at the moment how it sort of works out, you know. But, uh, that's incredible. Yeah, it's just and it's funny. And now I I'm trying to I have a fourth show I'm trying to work on, but I can't because I'm so busy. Give him a break. And I do that. I do the other shows, which is lovely. And And obviously, I still want more schools to sort of book. There's three and a half thousand primary schools in Ireland, so there's more than enough. And I I, I joke people. I only need I I need two hundred and eighty one of them to book me, and they're like. That's a very specific number because there are 281 school days. So I can't actually oh. do any more than that. <laughs> I can sometimes squeeze in two schools in the same day if they're in the same neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I drive down to Cork, whatever, a school down there might say, oh, we have the local school here just up the road. They're going to book you as well. Go, oh, great. Well, look, I'll do a deal, save you on petrol and that sort mm-hmm. of thing. Oh, fantastic because they kind of network and it's a better deal for two schools and do that. And that, that can work out, you know, as well. And you have, so you have four shows. Well, I have three shows. So I have the Hack Show, which is the first one. And for any school that hasn't booked me before, I sort of say it's a good sort of start off point because yeah. everybody's worried about social media. It generally speaking talks about phones and stuff as well. And then because I look to see, I don't want to just write a show just for the good of my own ego. I got to go, what do schools need? Mm. If I, if, you know, if there's a square socket and I'm trying to hammer a triangle into it, it doesn't really help. Where they're going, we need a triangle, you know, and you go, that's great. So the social media was a big thing uh, well-being was another big also well-being is like a very wide topic mm-hmm. so my show the well-being show specifically deals with things you can do with your body to improve your mental health 
So I'm not talking about meditation, but I'm talking about like, you know, exercise and breathing and things like that. So because I could write 10 shows on well-being, so I kind of go, well, I have one anyway, and that'll do that. And then the third one was obviously bullying was a huge thing. And originally the hack show, the principal said to me, could you do one about social media and bullying? I'm just trying to get all that into an hour. And, and, I was, and I was like, actually, I have so much material here, but I was so precious about the material, I didn't want to delete anything, because mm. I, but these are my little babies. <laughs> and these little, I can't get rid of them now. But then it's okay if I say, oh no, I'll take it out and I'll put it into a, a new show. Then it's like, oh, I'm not ruining it. It's just going into another little package somewhere else. So I took out all the bullying stuff and I added in peer pressure stuff and I put a bit of cyberbullying stuff and that became Pushed, which is the, the bullying show uh, as well. And um, so now you have three different things. So the current show I'm working on is called Distracted. And the idea is that I'm just, it's all about screen time and the kind of alarming statistics about screen time. And this applies to kids, you know, adults, grandparents. It's, it affects all of us, you know, and just the fact that it sounds mad, but at one point, you know, in the future, I may do a show on like addictive things, everything from like high energy drinks to like nicotine and things like that. And people sort of say, well, you can only so much you can talk about with primary school kids. And but I it's go, the same effect on our brain, isn't well, it? Well, that's the thing, you know, and also I would like, I would argue, I know it sounds mad or whatever, but I would say that, you know, people say, oh, heroin, that's the most addictive thing in the world. And I kind of go, no. I think phones are. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. And people go, that's mad. And I go, well, I can walk out, I can walk down the street. I don't see people on heroin everywhere. Mm -hmm. Go to certain places, you will. But I, I walk down, but everybody is on the phone. It doesn't matter if you're a grandparent, if you're a teenager, if you're a kid, you're trying to work out how can I get on a phone because my mum yeah. won't give me a phone. She's not looking. Yeah, exactly. And the only reason is because it's socially acceptable to be addicted mm -hmm. to a phone. And because of that, if everyone was allowed to be on heroin, everybody would be on heroin, but it's illegal. You know, it is very, I'm, I'm not trying to minimize the effect or whatever, but I kind of go, everybody has a phone. Everyone all the time is thinking, how can I look at the phone? Yeah. It's, you're sitting in a room by yourself. There's no chit chat with people anymore. Uh, a friend of mine is a second school teacher and he says, he says, he says, the way he put it, he goes, there's no crack in the staff room anymore. He used to go into there, and, there's, and I, when he was the youngest teacher in there, and he, he was like the cool teacher coming in, you know, and and he said, when I say crack, it's not like people messing, but he'd come in there, and like he's, he teaches maths, and he said he had honours maths students for the leaving certificate, and like fair play to anyone with math teachers, where you're like a page ahead of the students, because it's so difficult, and he says, guys, I've got to teach this in two hours, just let me work, can someone give me a hand working this out here, so... They sit down, they all kind of rough in and pull up the chairs or whatever. And now he says, if I do that, they all look up from their phones, kind of like, what? Like, why? Or, like, it's an inconvenience. Mm -hmm. And he's like, but like, the camaraderie, he said, it's all gone. He's like, I just go and hang out in the woodwork room with my friend now instead. Because yeah. it's just, it's not, it's not as much crack, you know? And he said, it's terrible. And I, I remember talking to a principal the other day and I said, now, of course, we're trying to keep the kids on this. And then the teachers are, are then the flicky flicky on, on this stuff. What happens when the principals are the ones that are obsessed with the phones, they can see the danger, but in 20, 30 years time, you know, they'll all be gone, and it'll be the people addicted to phones who are the principals now, and whether or not they're like, ah, oh, sure, it's grand to have the kids on the phone. I don't like, part of me goes, are we are we rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic? You know, it's a case of like, look, ever, just somebody think of the children and the phones, because it doesn't matter, they're all gonna get phones, soon toddlers will be, have a phone, you're, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're giving christening presents of phones to kids, you know, it'll just get ridiculous. Because like, it used to be that like a phone was, and bear in mind, like the iPhone came out in 2007. I know because it was the year uh, and myself and my wife got married because we drove across America uh, in, a, in a convertible, it was very cool. Oh. But, we, but we finished up in Las Vegas and for a few days there, which is hilarious when you don't drink and you don't gamble because you get to <laughs> you get to abuse all the facilities without paying a penny, which is great. But we got there and the iPhone was launched in a big Apple store and I have a picture of me standing beside it with a big thumbs up. That was 2007, so that was what, like 17 years ago. So before that, there was none of this. There were phones, but they looked like a brick and you just sent a text and the battery lasted, yeah. you know, a month yeah. on it. And that was it. <laughs> and then these came in and obviously it was like pretentious businessmen had them first in car phones. And then they got the size of the suitcase, got smaller and smaller. And then eventually, you know, the, when the iPhone came in, touchscreen, that sort of stuff came in and became more and more um, prevalent. Obviously, it was it was sort of a rite of passage to go to secondary school. You get your phone. That's just what you do because a lot of teenagers social life is based around the yeah. apps and stuff and I fully understand that you can't just isolate someone from all their friends and um, but you don't necessarily have to have all your friends through that you're physically sitting in a class with them you know but anyway uh, so that was that was a thing that would um, uh, that was, sorry, I lost my train of thought here uh, but but anyway is that the idea of the, oh yeah the phones get getting given to younger and younger so then it was kind of like oh um, COVID came along and the problem was people were like I'm at work I have to entertain. I have to, I have to do something here quickly. Just do your work, and then obviously they were on Zoom with their mm. uh, yeah here use this device because I'm on the laptop 
with my boss use the laptop kids are just on the phones more so that sort of skipped a whole lot of age preference for yeah. kids so now they're much younger coming in and it was sort of oh it's a confirmation and we get that and that now it's sort of jumped down to like it's your communion and going down and like i did a show i won't say where it, where it was it was a couple of months ago and you know the teacher did say she said this is quite a disadvantaged area but she says i was doing just a regular magic show this wasn't a hack show and she said uh, she said half of my junior infants have phones and i was like that's crazy and she said i understand but she says they are the best babysitter in the world yeah a kid will never go they'll never just go thanks dad that's great and hand the phone back to you and go i finished that because there's no end to it it's a bottomless pit yeah. of unbelievable entertainment and fun and stuff and they'll never and she said we have kids like if you were just coming to school who one we got these lovely new books in and they ripped the books and we were like what are you doing but they're trying to swipe they've never held a book in their hand and they're swiping through and she says and it doesn't work and it doesn't work yeah and, and the page is ripped and we're like oh we got funding for these lovely books whatever and the problem is that you know you're trying to talk to a parent but then of course you come off to the bad guy because the parent is like oh, the kids are wrecking my head read the book here i give them the phone they leave me alone and, and it's great and, and it's they're quiet and it's, and they're quick and they're quiet whatever and then we're going to rest my head and they'll hear shut up yeah. yeah and just throw the phone at them and do that and i, I understand i'm not saying that you shouldn't use her like if you're on a long haul flight with a toddler <laughs> you could bring a circus with you i don't care because there are times you're like i want to play for seven hours i've got yeah. 200 people who are like would you please yeah, yeah, give yeah. something to your child because that's other people you have to be aware of but i understand you're in a restaurant other people have that's what it is for yeah exactly it's a one-off thing where you do that if you kind of go oh we do this for every single meal like we went down we went for a walk down in wicklow and um, myself my wife and the kids and we're down to see that lovely tower you walk up the big spiral oh, tower, yeah, you know, the, the, yeah, the, and the big yeah. slide coming down and we're looking around and like my, my son who's 12 is like this is just class the trees are class and a couple walks by and there's like a kid who's like seven or eight and then there's like a kid who's maybe two in a buggy but with a phone oh. you know and and i don't want to judge people but i kind of go what you're teaching them is that all of this trees and everything you're seeing that's not enough this is garbage the phone is great. And it and takes practice. And, and also, it won't, it won't be... Immediate. And I kind of go, I understand if you're in a restaurant and you're like, oh, it's a really posh place to try and keep the kid quiet. And that's a different sort of thing. But you're, kind of, you're living in nature. Everyone's running around screaming yeah. and shouting. You can let them... If you want them in the buggy, that's fine. And, do that. and all the kids get sick and they have a bad day. And, you know, that's fine. And a little bit more TV time helps out on that side. But just the normal thing yeah. to just give them that sort of chance, you know, to, to do it is, is, a, is kind of... Is just a much, a much yeah. better idea, you know? Yeah. You talk about <laughs> dopamine on your show. Yeah. Where does dopamine come from in a world without phones? Uh, well, like the thing, and as I stress many times during the show, I kind of go, I am not a scientist, you know? I, I literally get up there and I kind of go, and then obviously when people are going to book me, they go, look, your comedy credentials, we've seen your funny clips, and we've seen, I was a presenter on RTE Junior for years, all that sort of stuff, and that's fine, but like, how how much do you know the stuff? So all I know is that I kind of go, I can read a book on something here about a subject I don't know about. And I kind of go, that's very interesting, right? But that's not interesting to a nine-year-old. How do I make that interesting? Yeah. So the whole thing with the dopamine was along the lines of, you know, um, training a rat to press a, press a button. And then, you know, you hit the button, it gets a peanut, it gets a dopamine rush, and it's from a surprise. Uh, and it has to be like a pleasant surprise. Um, so if getting something pleasant isn't enough. So having pleasant surprises in your life is basically what you need to do so if you're you know doing something different with the kids which is tricky i know because parents are like oh what are we going to do the way trying to think how we get a good saturday what are we going to do all this sort of stuff but coming up with different sort of ideas and things like that i'm a huge proponent of um board games and card games because i think a lot of times what well, stuff will happen someone do a talk and they go the phones are bad and we gotta go yeah we get it we know the phones are bad whatever but like they're not bad all the time yeah. they are good and, the, and yeah. some of the books i read for the distracted show actually show you that you know if you're doing studying as a teenager and you study for 25 minutes your brain will kind of go that's it i can't cope anymore but if you mess on your phone for five minutes you can now study for another 25 minutes very well mm -hmm. you only need five minutes and then you get another 25 minutes and then five minutes another 25 minutes. Moment, moment break. exactly yeah. so the phone has a place to do that if you're on the phone for five hours you go yeah we have to have a conversation again that's that's gone too far and to do that sort of thing so like obviously people go what do you mean with board games like playing monopoly with kids and everything and they go no no that's like a horrendous game that takes two hours to play and you shout it at christmas and then everyone goes i'll never play that stupid game again and then you forget till next december yeah. i go no there's loads of games out there uh, different things you can get and as a, if you want a recommendation i'll give everyone a free recommendation because i love games most of the games you get in smiths are not great because it used to be the rule was you to pick up the box and there's no instructions in the box. You have to look at the back of the box. And if you can understand the game by looking at the back of the box, that's simple enough for you to understand. Now the rule is you have to look at the cover of the box. 
And if you don't understand how to play the game, then it's not going to sell because people have no patience to read yeah. the back of the button to pick it off the shelf. Wow. So, so you see, you get oh pie face. Oh, you put your face in here. We click a little button, and one's going to get covered, get covered in you know marshmallows or cream, yeah. whatever like that. That's funny, okay? Now you're not going to play that every day with your kids. At Christmas, hilarious when you have it come over to the grand yeah. that sort of thing. But I want games that you can play, which are really simple, really cheap. So a game I, I only got to do the last week. This is called uh, Sust. It's S U S S E D. It's a little card game. It's about like a tenner on Amazon. I got it and. Uh, all it is is basically you sit down, really cool thing for, because uh, I'm obsessed with tables, I think tables are the most important bit of furniture in your house. Sitting around a table with your kids is just amazing. And is it after dinner, you take out these, there's basically 200 cards and each card has three questions on it and there's three answers for each card. Okay, so I'll take one out here just for a laugh or to yeah. see, okay. So it'll do things like, um, <laughs> so for example, <laughs> like if I was to ask you, I'd say, which of these do you wish you were better at? A, flying kites, B, doing push-ups, or C, staying out of trouble, okay? And then the idea is that uh, as the kids, they ask us to the moment, and the kids all make bets. They kind of go, I bet mum's going to say oh. this. But they do it in secret. They have an A, B, and a C card. They put okay. them down, and then mum goes, oh, I wish you could do more push-ups. That's what my wife said. I'd love to do more push-ups. Uh, and then someone's like, oh, and I was like, oh, I got that. I told you she would do that, whatever. Uh, what, would you, what would you go over? I'd say... <laughs> flying kites, doing push-ups, or staying out of trouble. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> because, and, also, and it's weird. So because many thoughts in my head. I know, and like staying out of trouble because the, some of them are loaded for you. you kind of go, this is just nonsense. But you kind of going staying out of trouble. There's a lot more going on in that question yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. And what's good? I and like you, that one. Yeah, that's good. So yeah, and it's great. And we do it. We do like and there's three questions. Yeah, I don't like homework. Oh, yeah. I wish I could just find homework without like, <laughs> yeah. getting in trouble. So. Oh, okay, that'd, that'd be good, yeah. So, anyway, so like, I got this thing here, and the kids will sit down, and it's not like we're going to play this for an hour. Yeah. We just take out a card, and they go, okay. But gonna... that's hates of dopamine, because what's, you don't yeah. know what you're getting. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a nice surprise. It's a nice surprise, and what's really good is, uh, lots of these are like, are silly nonsense or whatever, but like some of them, you know, like one of them there asked my wife, was like, these are three sites around the world, which you'd like to go and see? And I thought... She'd like to go and see the Great Barrier Reef. She's like, no, I'd love to see the Amazon rainforest. Oh, and then we have a 10 minute conversation about this. And I was, and the kids are going, oh, really? What's the Amazon rainforest? And you're chatting about that. And it just starts off. And it's a silly end game. And having a whole conversation. Yeah. And it's not an airy fairy. Booking now, a holiday. Yeah, we're not going to sit there and go, now we're going to talk about our feelings today. And have this one. And we're going to, now, now, how do you feel about this? It's just, it's a funny game. And there is a winner and a loser. And also, what, <laughs> you, yeah, well, it's just like, well, my son's the loser. And you go to bed crying. <laughs> That's fine, okay? But it, it's competitive. So everyone's like, I'm going to know mum better than you know mum, you know, and when your kids know your, know mm. your wife better than yourself, you kind of go, okay, I need to chat to my wife a bit more about yeah, this, yeah, you know, which yeah, is funny. Yeah. So it's a great little thing to do that. And what they can do is there's an extra card. You can double your bet. So you're like, I am 100% sure oh. that mum wants to go to the, to the Amazon forest. Dad thinks it's a great ra a barrier reef, but I think it's the Amazon forest. And if you do that, then you get two points instead of one. But if you're wrong, you lose a point. Okay. So it's a very, very Great. simple thing, like a very simple gambling thing like that. Uh, but and you it's could, so easy to bring that's it. Literally, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's a little game like that where all the cards come into play like that, and they have like this five different boxes. This is all like wacky, different quest. One of them is all like stuff around the world. One of them is all like gross stuff. Would you prefer to put marshmallows in your ear, marshmallows uh. up your nose, or marshmallows <laughs> in your hair? You know, and you're like, well, no, there's no winning answer, but you have a yeah, funny yeah, conversation yeah. about it. Anyway, so that, I kind of go like that there, like it's a 10, 10 euro, you know, and if you're looking for a stocking filler for Christmas, that's great, you know. Cheaper and, than a phone anyway. Yeah, and I have nothing to do, I, 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 I have nothing to do with, and I kind of go, people go, well, that, that's good, and I go, that's a nice little thing, and you have a little ritual. Mm -hmm. Sorry, getting me back to my tables, I did a show recently, I went into a house, and it was a birthday party, I think it was a seven-year-old girl, do the show, and all through the show, I was like, something is really annoying me about this house, I can't, it's really freaking me, I couldn't work it out. Because they, they brought me through to like the kitchen and, and only when I was leaving I was like, There's no tables in this house. And I was like, How can you how can you a uh, function? I guess and I then I realised, oh, they have a long corridor of a sitting room with the biggest TV I've ever seen. And I was like, and there's not even like a breakfast bar, there's nothing in there at all. So I was like, they literally eat all their meals on the couch watching the telly. Oh. And I was like, where do they do their homework? Like I so the default no, setting is work. yeah exactly, exactly so you're like no problem sounds <laughs> awesome sounds, sounds amazing that's great well, for whatever for reading a book you know sitting down like at a table whatever. and I was just I was, and also for like like my kids love drawing and yeah. making things like there's nowhere to games, and, anything like that whatever it's just a table is just I, I say to parents like the table is the most important room the most important bit of furniture because you have all the and I understand parents work long hours and sometimes you can't all be there for a meal but I kind of go if you can aim for most of the time to try and mm. do that 
just have, have to stop. make an effort. We're so oh, yeah. like I'm not judging. I'm not judging. Well, I am yeah. a little bit sometimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like I know. It's we just have to make an effort. Time doesn't come to you or knocks at your door. Hi, I'm time here. I'm coming. Yeah. You, 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 no, you it, have to make it happen. Exactly. And like for example, like on a Monday, we do what we call pizza and movie night. Okay. Now our our family love movies and stuff, and the kids always know we get pizza and we sit on the couch watching a movie, and it's all of us together, yeah, and we all have to agree in a movie. It's a connection to that yeah. sort of thing. But, but apart from that, we're kind of going, kind of, okay, watch, tell you. Like, no, no, we do it on Monday, you know, and then yeah. we're going to sit at the table and do that. And of course, I have a late show sometimes. I might be down the country. It might take me a few hours to get home, and I get back in late, whatever. But my wife would have sat down with the kids and had a yeah. meal, do that, whatever. And then sometimes they might be doing stuff. Oh, we'll hang all the way for you, you know, and have a mm. meal together, do that. And that, I understand why it comp- complicated lives. But it, the default setting should be like, I'm trying to have yeah. a meal together. It's not going to work at all the time. I have this strange job and that's fine. As the kids get older, I'm able to do more and more of that. You know, so even like you know, studying later on, you need the yeah. table, you need that sort of space. I could a house with, with no with no table. It just was the weird. Thing. I was like, what do you do? I was like, oh, I have TV. It's TV. They, TV their life yeah. is TV. You know? And I love TV and I love movies and everything like that. You know, and that's another thing as well with like the hack show is that it, it's just to say like yes, I do use social media, but like I have, I have the if I have the the. Uh, built in on my Android phone, you can go in and it says, after 10 minutes of TikTok, it just says to me, that's it, you've had enough now. Mm. Now I can go onto Facebook and go, I'll give you 10 minutes of that, I'll give you 10 minutes of YouTube, 10 minutes of your know, Instagram, whatever, but it'll just click out and loads of times, I'll be just doing something where I would have looked up and gone, oh, that was 40 minutes just wasted, mm. doing this, whatever, where 10 minutes, it just clicks and go, oh, I need to go on with things. And it just, it'll, just, it'll, just a little tap on the shoulder, go, boop, boop, that's it, yeah. you know? Now obviously, you can put locks on a kid's phone, to stop them literally not being able to get into that, whatever, which is fine. And when my son got his phone um, going into, at the end of sixth class, um, we said, you can have your phone. But a great bit of advice someone said to me was, you can have the phone, but we're not going to put any social media on it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, and I was kind of, that might solve a lot of issues because you take social media and you're like, okay, all the stuff I'm kind of cool with is actually okay with it. Now he didn't mind. And I think also that may be a boy girl thing as well, I think. Not everybody, not just the generally mm-hmm. speaking, I think the girls may be more messaging centered and connect to people. The lads see it as a device, but we play games on it. Yeah. And we go to my friend's house, I sit here and you sit there and we play a game together. We may not even be playing the game, the same game, but we're sitting, it's a communal thing we do together where the girls are more sort of messaging orientated. Mm-hmm. And I've seen some parents say, Oh, yeah, my, I like my, my son is older, he got his phone. I was going to say, oh, My daughter's nine, give her the phone. I saw some of the messages and she said, Also, it was an awkward situation where someone, a friend of a friend, their grandparents bought the kids phones, which is a very awkward situation to put the parents in because they spent a lot of money on this yeah. and the kid's like, you're the best grandparents ever and this you're is brilliant. The and then, and then you're like, oh, what am I going to do here? So you're trying to, so literally she said, I, the messaging was so horrendous. And this is not like a 12, this is like a nine year old girl. And she's like, I wouldn't have sent this stuff when I was 15. The no. message was going on. The boys are kind of, she said, absolutely fine. They play games, they chat. I'm sure there's bullying and nasty stuff going on as well. But generally speaking, but generally speaking the girl usually say, you know, Girls collect people, boys collect things. Usually, yeah, not yeah. always, but usually yeah. that's a good rule to sort of stick by and, 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 and has that sort of effect. So the girls, sort of, the, all the internet, and I know if I'm doing the show in a girls' school and a boys' school, it's very different okay. because I do a lot of stuff on Instagram and filters. And obviously yeah. the lads, you know, look at me, I kind of go, I'll keep this brief because maybe they have a sister, maybe, you know, they have a girlfriend at some point, you'll be like, dealing with the older end of school. That, that might be relevant to where if I'm doing it in the girls' school, I'll push it a bit longer. I get a girl to come up and take a selfie, and they're always embarrassed to do it. And I go, but you'll take a selfie and send it to 300 people there, but you feel embarrassed, look like an Egypt taking a selfie <laughs> in front of 300 people. And you go, yeah, because you, you go, why? You're doing the pose with the, the peace sign and the, and the duck face and this sort of stuff. But it, and you go, oh, it's embarrassing. I'm like, yeah, but you'll take this here and send it to all these people, but you won't do it in front of all these people because you're going to go, yeah, this is kind of stupid. And I go, yeah, but it feels okay when you're sitting in your kitchen making yeah. a funny face. I go, you, it is the same thing. No one can see it behind the camera. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, that, and that sort of thing. And it's just funny how that, and the other thing as well, like the only other thing I said to my son, because obviously he got WhatsApp for communicating with friends, is that, that you're not to be in an all class group. I think that's those large groups of messaging and stuff. And I have that in uh, as part of the bullying show is um, humans are not made to talk to 30 people at a time. So if I'm talking, I'm talking to you. Now, obviously, this is a weird situation because I'm running a podcast here. So I'm being mindful of that. As I say things, anybody in the world can hear yeah. this and listen to me. I can do that. But normally, Uh-oh. I, I, yeah, it's, I normally like that, whatever. I, I, I would, if I'm talking to somebody, I would say something and I kind of go, I can have a conversation with you, with you. That's fine. If you're talking with two or three people, I have to, I have to bear in mind because this person may look at life a bit differently than you, mate. And I kind of go, I can't say something that I might say to them 
that I, that I would say to you or something because you have to bear in mind if you're talking to 30 people to what to know what's going on in 30 people's heads basically means so doing being in a whatsapp group of 30 people is like being a stand-up comedian because you have a whole room full of people and when you say something you're going to offend somebody no matter what you say but and kids are just they, 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 they the, the thoughts in their head and it's just straight to text and out not even it's just head out texted and you're like whoa 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 but their, what? Brain, their brain is not developing yeah they don't they know about, you're holding back whatever and also they may or they're too young they haven't actually insulted anyone in their life yet yeah. where you and I have not really oh that, I can't believe yeah, I said I'm yeah. so sorry but I, I'll never let that happen again you know and I've done things where I'm like I said something like oh I will 100% make yeah. sure things I've done in the show where I'm like oh, I really have to watch that and be mindful of that because I don't want them like I used to do a survey of what Ki- uh, gadgets kids have I would say um, okay and I say stand up because I want the kids out of the chair I say right. stand up who has a Playstation right stand up who has an Xbox stand up who has a Switch and of course the kids are all jumping it down well you know? I noticed I don't yeah. know if you said something like that it was yeah. somewhere else but yeah. I noticed my son was at the show and yeah. he, stand, he stood up with every single device and he doesn't have any of it Oh really? And it was the peer pressure. That now, it, do you know it, what? Is I, that where you're going? Now, it's, it's, it? it's yeah. only recent. And since I noticed he, he, since he got then, up each time. That's like really, PlayStation, uh, everything. Yeah, no, he doesn't have any. That's of that. so funny because because uh, the reason why I actually have decided to take that out of the show was because that exact reason because and that's hilarious that he stood up whatever and that's very he kind of goes I don't be feel mm-hmm. like left out but the other thing is that and the the only answer I care about is who has a phone. Because I kind of go a few different colors. That was the so, question, I think. He put his hand up as well. Yeah, and <laughs> because the problem is that I can't find out who has a phone without everyone else in the class knowing who has a phone. Because if I say who has a phone, if they put their hand up, then they go, oh my goodness, 40 people in my class have a phone. I don't have a phone. Mum, the man said that everyone has a phone. And then I'm now, I'm the exact opposite is I don't want people to get phones. And now I'm the reason because. But I saw 40 people in the class put their hand up. They've never actually asked everyone who has a phone and people who aren't in their class, people that are not friends of theirs, and they go, there's so many people with phones, Mom, yeah. they have to get me a phone, like I feel. So I didn't want that, so I, so I thought the only way I could do is I get all the kids, in, and I might do this in the future, I get everyone, I want you to close your eyes, put your head down on your laps, okay? Hands up if you have a PlayStation, uh, okay? Uh, now you don't see yeah. everybody else. Put your hand for one second, put your hand back down. Yeah. So just, whoop. Up like that, and then okay, hands up. Who ha- and I make a joke. I go, hands up as a microwave, and they're like, "Oh, you all gonna? We all love popcorn." And then you burst a bit of it, and then yeah, after I go, "Who has yeah. a phone?" Who has go? And I go, "Okay, I have a rough idea. Who has a phone? Yeah. Just the number, because certain schools will have more." So I go, "Wow, this school, everyone has a phone." Oh, actually, quite few of here because it's different. A lot of maybe more schools down the country might have more most phones. Yeah. Urban areas there would maybe more yeah. phones. That there's a bit of peer pressure on the street, playing with friends and that sort of stuff, and it's definitely different. So that's it. But I remember going, "I don't want that to be." So that's something in the shows. So I'm like, "That's." something I need to watch mm. out for. I don't want them to... And it to... wouldn't give you real information anyway. Well, exactly, right? yeah. And I kind of go, yeah, wh- What? how does it benefit me by knowing how many kids here have a phone? We know that a lot of them, in sixth class, I'm doing a show for sixth class. I'm doing a show for first class. I hope they don't have phones, you know. Yeah. But for sixth class, you kind of go, it's reasonable enough to assume. And then, even the way I say things, so in the show, I used to say... Uh, like I, I give the word called I say the word swiper okay yeah. and I joke because someone in sixth class goes swiper oh that's that's the fox from Dora the Explorer <laughs> swiper no swiping and of course and they go do you love Dora the Explorer I really <laughs> make a big joke in the 12 year going thank you very much I love Dora the Explorer whatever and we have a bit of a laugh but the uh, the point of doing that was to say that you know you look at an app and you swipe I, I, I've kind of hijacked the word to mean an app that shows you a video, you swipe, you watch a video, you swipe, and that's what I call a swiper. So that's like a TikTok and, you know, uh, Facebook stories, Instagram reels, anything you swipe, YouTube shorts. But uh, I don't want, I, I was kind of saying, you know the way when you're on a swiper, and that's like, that's assuming that everyone in the audience has a phone, and I don't want to do that because mm. I'd be doing the show for a third class, and they're like, the sooner I get a phone, the sooner I know what this man's talking about. So I don't want that. So now, what I've changed, literally over the last sort of you know few weeks, I kind of said, I'm going to say, so when a teenager's on a phone, and I just go, I'm just going to assume that that's the normal thing. Okay. If you're on a phone, you're a teenager. Okay. And even if, so the kids might be like, oh, I'm, I'm not a teenager. I'm, uh, when I'm, I'm a teenager, I get to that. Now, of course, I love the irony of this, that if, because a lot of, lot of schools have this sort of, um, get phones out of uh, the primary school, which is great. Even if every single parent and every teacher in the school agree to all this, they walk into secondary school and they get a phone and all the problems go back again. Mm-hmm. But I kind of go, we have to draw a line in the sand somewhere. And first, from that primary school to secondary school is such a big jump. I think it's a good sort of way to, yeah. to, to place like that. If it's kind of come back and come back and gone to like communal level where you've got like eight and nine year olds, it's tricky because, well, I got this from my community. What did you, oh, you didn't get a phone for your community? Yeah, I didn't need money. I'm like, I got to talk. I got to Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's the problem. So it's a solely... Now, a lot of schools, I know, um, uh, 
uh, Rachel Harper, who's been great since we started the whole sort of um, it takes a village and getting phones mm. out of school. Actually, she was the principal of what was my school when I was in primary school years ago. Went back to see her and, and it's going very well and everyone's copying each other, which is brilliant to get, to get those phones out of the school. But I, I said to her, I said, you will have a difficult time getting phones out of fifth and sixth class if they have yeah. a phone already. Yeah. You know, um, as a, it's an analogy. It's like, it's like trying to get a gun out of someone's hand who likes mm-hmm. guns. You know, it's just like, no, God, it's my right to have a gun. It's like getting a lollipop and then... Try it and you like it, yeah, okay. And, and you take, take it away, yeah. So I said, I said, I think schools, whatever, and also what a lot of teachers said, they're under this terrible pressure now. They said that uh, parents are coming up to them going, listen, this whole no uh, phones thing is that's the voice they use. <laughs> this, this thing, you know, the voice, this whole phone thing, I totally agree with it, whatever. Now, I wouldn't be able to cross that to my child. So if you could just tell the children, yeah, the children. The bad guy. yeah exactly yeah. And the, the, the teacher like well, like good cop bad cop we're the bad cop yeah, again yeah. it used to be like Peter, like a, a parent teacher meeting it used to be like you know the parents and the teachers here as a team sort of going how can we help yeah, the pupil yeah, now yeah. it's the pupil and the parents versus this combined so I'd, thing I'd love to give it to you but teacher won't let me and yeah exactly you know, that, that, that sort of thing whatever and they're like oh it's so terrible whatever mm. I'm like does anybody does nobody say no to their kids anymore as well like it's quite important you know and anyway so that was the thing where it's like I said I said to her your best bet is not to write off fifth and sixth class you can still educate them on mm-hmm. what the effects are because just the, create the awareness yeah, of noticing yeah, what you it, were saying exactly about. in a year's time they're going to be in secondary school they're going to get the phone anyway and that's fine yeah. but i said if you start with first class and you kind of go you absolutely will be getting a mm-hmm. phone at the end of sixth class that summer break it's a good time because they're with their friends mm-hmm. they go their numbers and stuff and you have it over there and you have it and you start and you go and you follow up so the sixth class six cl- or second class you go right don't forget now a couple of years down and to go, you age out the kids with the phones yeah. and you start young. Now, I realise the parents have to sort of agree with that as well. But if it's young, it's a lot easier than trying to, you know, fifth and sixth class. And any parents I've talked to are like, we are just so glad because we just don't want to be the odd ones out. Mm. We don't want to be like every kid has a phone except our son. And if people are like, like do you not love your child? You know, this sort of thing. You know, and no one says that, but it's a subliminal thing. It's like, oh, it's different to speak. I'm not a boy passes. Things are a bit tough, you know, and it's like, no, because we don't think it's a good idea. Where if everyone, if you're the only one to try and get a phone, um, and because no parent wants to spend a couple of hundred quid in a phone mm. for, a, you know, a, an eight-year-old, that is a very high chance of dropping the phone and smashing, because it's not as delicate. A teenager's like, this is my social life, I will yeah, hang on to this like a baby. It's where, a toy. It's just a toy, it's whatever, a toy. you know, and you're going to go, just get them a toy yeah. instead, you know, <laughs> get them a toy instead. And also, there's this sort of unwritten rule, it's like, well, we hung on as long as we could, but like my nine-year-old has a phone now, so I guess all the toys just in the bin. I'm like, no, hang on, hang on. What, what are you doing? Okay, this doesn't, does this isn't in, instead of everything else. I kind of go like, we have a PlayStation in our house, we have an Xbox in our house, we have a Switch in our house. But like, it's my not son, a replacement. it's not a replacement. And people kind of go, well, like when kids come over, like I might, my son who's twelve, he's gonna be thirteen in three weeks' time. When his friends come over, and um, like he's into Dungeons and Dragons, okay. And you know, I remember explaining this to his teacher in sixth class, and he's like, so what, what? What is this thing? Is it they, they dress up I'm like no no they don't dress up or like that? <laughs> it's just they sit at a table and he said he'll just create an adventure. Table. And it's a table, exactly <laughs> very important. And his friends will come in and sit down and they will just scream and shout at each other and roll dice and have an adventure for like three hours. The last time they come over, like the, the, the his friends forgot to bring their phones with them. The parents like have the phone with them and they're like, they're fine, they're in our house. Like where do you yeah. think they're going? Like they're fine, yeah. you know, and doing that. And they get back and he goes, so were you guys watching like what were your kids doing like they said that they went off an adventure like did you drive them somewhere like no they're at the table rolling dice okay and doing this okay and when I explained it to the teacher I said you know, in sixth class like the homework you're giving them is not a patch on how complicated it is for a de- like you have to you'll get like an adventure book you'll read through an adventure book of all those the story of what the story is then you'll create characters for his friends. Friends like, oh, I want to be an orc. Okay, that's fine. Okay, you've got a big axe, right? Now, if you want to roll, and you have to learn all the rules of, and the rule book is the like, like a telephone. Making, yeah. Problem solving, imagination, creativity, all this other stuff. communication, everything. Yeah, and then he has the pressure to make sure his friends have a good time. So yeah. it's like, oh, this battle is going a bit badly. So he has a little screen, he rolls a dice, and he goes, oh, the, the monster's about to kill one of them. I'll just pretend the number was different to make sure they get through and they survive. Mm. And the friend's like, this is brilliant. Social skills. Yeah, and then they go, they, they, sometimes the story might take, it might take 15 hours. So you have to come back week after week, come back wow. and do it. And one of his friends, 
does it and he comes in there and he I said do you want to join the Friday he said oh no I said I haven't I need time to practice you know like he's going to an <laughs> office you know but he loves whatever and like yeah. to get a, a, like a, a 13 year old sit down and read a big stack of books like a foot thick hardback books rare. all sorts of stuff and he goes oh that's what it is I could use this creature now and then the friends are come up create ways of getting to the problems you're like okay you're in a room it's a dungeon here, there's a trap, and he goes, okay, we've got to get a rope, we've no rope, okay, I can do a spell, I can make a vine grow down, okay, make a vine, we could we could swing over in a vine, and then he's like, okay, they've thought away out of this trap, I have to make the trap more powerful, you know, and all sorts of stuff, and that's just paper, pencil, and dice, yeah. and that's it, you know, and obviously, it's not for everybody, you know, and it, you know, but it's just kind of going, that's something they can get into, you know, yeah. and be, you know, obsessed with it, and I, I just think board games are great anyway. So it's, amazing. it's amazing. So much goes on there. And that's what yeah. life should be about. Just well, those, yeah. <laughs> those games you know, yeah. that, that teach you. Exactly. What's the quote you use for your bullying show? The bullying show? Yeah. What do you mean? Uh, what's a, uh, the, the, the definition of a bully? Oh, well, now I... I, I, I try to th also think what thing I want to do because obviously okay. people, <laughs> well, people, have, people have loads of uh, people who will do bullying talks and, you know, and I was like, I want to come up with a different idea. So teachers who... Uh, teachers who normally come in there to sort of correct their papers whilst I'm doing the show and at the end they're like oh, for flip's sake like I was trying to get an, I, I ended up watching a show going this is really interesting I want to get an hour of correcting sorry, done I'm so, I'm so sorry I'll try to make it more boring for adults next time you know so I, I thought after, and I'll spend this is why I spend two or three months I can't just write a show you, you can put the gun to my head I could maybe write a show in a week but I need time to think about stuff and go okay and I'll read two or three books and, and I'll read a book which has nothing to do with the topic maybe it might spark something in my head I might watch a TV show and go that's very interesting so with bullying I came up with the idea that I think a lot of bullying, not all of it, but a lot of bullying is basically um, people who think they're a stand-up comedian, but they're not. Okay, so if I make a joke, not about, funny. they're not funny, exactly. <laughs> but the, and also the fact that like no school, you don't go to school to develop your sense of humor. It's not taught, but I think like it's one of the most important skills mm -hmm. because it's how you get on with people. You're going to probably in an office job, probably in a cubicle, not everybody does that, but you need to get on with people. You don't have to be, you know, best friends with them, but you need to be friendly. And the best thing is a bit of humor. Mm -hmm. And it's not like in a curriculum, it's not taught, you know, and then how do you learn? You just try it out with your friends and you say things and you begin to laugh, you say things, you laugh and they say things and your friend cries and you go, oh, that was too much. Okay. But you, but you make them cry, but five of your other friends laugh and you're like, oh, I feel really good doing this. It kind of sucks that this guy, kind of bit the well, bullet on this but I'm willing to say whatever and then I, I, I just teach I said people love repetition people love the same thing and you go into class like I remember that like I was a, a friend of a friend and they they when they were in primary school it was a girl and all the girls in her class ignored her for a year and pretended she didn't exist okay and it started out probably with someone as a bit of a joke just like you know oh I can't see you whatever I went on like that and then the next day the kids just click and go, oh, this is what we do. Yeah. And people go, who started? I don't remember who started this. Just what do every day we go in and we ignore this person. And then for a year, and that person had to leave school, like took a long time to make friends. Like it had a huge effect on their life by not mm -hmm. having having people ignore them. You know, And I also say that bullying, you have to punch someone, you have to say something nasty. I said, you could just not talk to someone and that's the worst possible thing you can yeah. do to them. You exclude someone. I do an example where I say, I'm going to bully one of you here and all these sixth class are sitting back and I go, I take out my phone, I go and say, okay, I'm going to pretend I'm in sixth class with you. Okay, I'm going to send invitation to my party, send it to you, send it to you, send it to you. I ignore the first, fourth person, send it to you, send it to you. And the fourth person is like, um, sorry, what's, uh, what's going on here? And I said, was I mean to you? No. Did I say anything? Did I hit you? No. Did I steal anything? No. I didn't do anything to you. And people at lots of schools that say, oh, do we get to get a screenshot of the bully? And you're like, what's your screenshot? There's nothing to screenshot. I didn't do anything. And if that person asks the person, did you forget to invite me to the party? Oh, did I? But so sorry about that. Here's your invitation. And you're kind of like, did they actually forget? Yeah. Are they just making me ask for an invitation to sort of demean no, I me? Don't want to go. I never don't want to go, whatever. And it's a big thing. And then and if anyone goes along going, that's hard what your daughter did to my daughter. And people go, oh, she just forgot. You know, yeah. and the mother might be honestly, the child could yeah. be lying to the mother. And you don't know. And that's probably where the hard, most worst thing is just being excluded. Mm -hmm. So I try to get that idea across by sort of excluding things. I also give the example that I did street performing um, in Edinburgh once at the comedy festival, which is were great fun. And a thing, and whenever I do this, you can hear a pin drop in any school I go to. And I say, I used to do this um, thing where I would um, I would copy people on the street. And I, I just, I wouldn't, 
kind of like a mime thing, and I would stand in the street, and somebody would walk by, it would be like um, a guy on a phone, loudly, and I would just walk along behind him, he's in the snazzy suit, whatever, and I go, rrr, 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 like this, whatever, and people would start looking, going, what's, what's this guy doing? And Because it's the festival, people go, oh, he's obviously a performer, mm -hmm. and they stop there, and suddenly there's 10 people, and then a woman walks by, and she's just pushing a buggy, and I pretend to be the baby, going, <laughs> I, and then I pretend that the, the poor mother, <laughs> and I follow them along, and then suddenly now there's 50 people, so suddenly there's 200 people standing in a circle, and every time, People are standing there going, why are we standing here? Like, what are we looking, looking here? And so we go, this is stupid, get out of my way. And whoever walks by, I copy them. And they go, oh, right, I get it now, I get it, I get it like that. And this went on. Now, I, I, can, I know we're, we're filming this as well, but the audio listeners won't be able to work this out. But someone came through, and it, it, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Someone came through, clearly was not able to walk properly, okay? Had a terrible limp, their leg was twisted in, and they, their arm was kind of twisted like that. And they could have limped across like that. And of course, I was, my instant reaction was kind of go, oh, I must cop. And then I, and then I saw 200 people, no one said a word. And they're like, if you do this, yeah. we are going to box the head off you. We literally will kill you if you copy this poor guy. And I remember, and like all the students there, even when you say it, you hear like someone go oh, like that. They put their hands to the mouth, go like, that's horrible. Do and I say, why is it not funny if I copy that? And, I, and then I say, because I said, I'm not being mean, but I said, but the walk they're doing is funny. And I do the walk and said, that is a funny way to walk if you can turn your leg and go normal again. But if you can't fix your leg, it's not funny if that's your walk until you're 90 years old, okay? And that's the difference for us. You're gonna go, that's funny. It is funny. That doesn't mean you get the right to do it. And people go, oh, that guy's got a big nose. Hey, everyone. And you make a joke with someone's big nose not without going, okay, this is really gonna upset that person yeah. because they can't just take their nose off, yeah. whatever. And I give it an example and it really sort of hits home because I go, that was an experience where I came out there and no one said anything to me, but it was just assumed, this is funny, this is funny, that is not funny, funny. you know, and to do that. And I have a whole thing. But that's us as a grown ups. Well, exactly. That's the thing as well. You know that, but children don't. They don't know that. And, funny, and they're just experimenting or whatever. And also, like, I, like, some of the funniest memories of my life are like friends of mine making jokes about friends of mine, you know, and how to slag someone. It's a real Irish thing. Ah, you know, slag. And then, of course, the old thing that Ireland people do, Irish people do, is, yeah, I sure was only messing. Yeah, yeah, I was only yeah, messing. Yeah. You kind of go, yeah, you're messing, but hurts. yeah, but you, but you, and the first time you make a joke, and you go, "That's fine." Your friend's lazy, whatever, and you get up there, oh, do, don't get up, do you get out of bed, this sort of thing, you know. And I have a friend of mine who's, you know, he's about ten years younger than me, and I always joke that, you know, he's about, he acts like he's seventy, you know, and he <laughs> jokes whatever. And like one time he was there a while ago, and he was getting up off the couch, and he's like, "You got do that sort of thing, you know." And I go, "Listen, man, when I get to your age, I hope I'm not that." And he goes, I'm, <laughs> you're, you're I, I, yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> whatever. Which is funny, okay. Yeah. Now I kept going on about that and making jokes or like that. Eventually, kind of goes. Ruben, just give it a rest. Like, we got the joke, okay? Yeah. But it's just making a point where I kind of go, you're eight years younger than me, you know, as long as you act like an elf, like, you know? And that's a funny thing to say, old people are young, and me, you know, bald guys. But when and, you laugh at yourself, and you're yeah. giving that permission for others to laugh yeah. at, and, with you. Yeah, and that's and that's definitely something that needs to be learnt, you know, and of course there's bullying that has nothing to do with that, whatever, you know? And then, and then I heard a phrase uh, uh, watching a movie, and I was like, that's great. Uh, and the phrase is, hurt people, hurt people. It's always easy to remember. And, yes. and, and everyone goes, what do you mean? Yeah. And the kids looking at it. The resentment and the anger. Yeah. I heard, and I said, I said, I, uh, there was a guy who was in school with me, whatever, and I remember he was we go, we about to go into an important exam. This is the intercert. This is showing my age a long time ago. But before, <laughs> the, before the junior cert, intercert, whatever. So I was like, you know, a fairly important exam. Went in and he stole my pen. I was like, give me the pen, give me the pen, whatever. And I eventually got the pen. But he swung his hand and slapped me in the face, okay? And it just... Like, it wasn't like a blood or anything like that, whatever, but it just gave me such a, and like, obviously I was kind of crying, I was kind of upset, whatever, and then, I wasn't like an eight-year-old, this is like a teenager. I remember sitting down, and like, it took me 20 minutes to f sort of find myself like that, and I was always kind of like, I can't believe he did that to me. You know, years and years later, I found out that, you know, the, the, the guy had a very bad relationship with his father, and won't go to details or whatever, but stuff, and I kind of go, I, I, I kind of felt sorry, it's just like, Hurt people hurt people, you yeah. know, and it was just like that was just normal, you know, yeah. uh, in his sort of head, whatever. And and the other thing is to s I say that for the bullying show is to say that it's not um, it's not you. There's nothing you've done. I say I, I, the joke I say is is that what's the corny line they use in every romantic comedy when someone's breaking up with someone else? What's it's the line? Not me. It's, not, yeah. it's not me. It's you. I always get it wrong. It's <laughs> exactly. not you. It's me. Exactly. Oh, it's not me. It's definitely you. <laughs> it's definitely you. You're so annoying. Yeah, exactly. So I, I, I never get to even like third class get yeah. like, it. It's such a trope. It's such a, a cliche. It's such a blaming yeah, sentence. Yeah, it's, isn't yeah. It? So, 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 but the idea is that it kind of go. It, it, they're trying to be trying to be nice to kind of go, look, there's nothing wrong with you. You're very nice, ever, but it's just, it's something in me. I just don't connect with you. And that's the idea. But I say with bullying, it's the opposite. 
it's you know if I'm if I, me being bullied, I can go. It's not me. It is actually you because the person who's bullied thinks that you know um, there's something wrong with me. Like I've done something wrong, whatever. Yeah. And I remember another guy in secondary school used to when I when when we used low down lockers, he used to stick his knee in my back getting his books, and I was like. Oh, and I was just, and I didn't know anyone. I went to a different secondary school than primary school, so I pretty much had no friends. And I had to kind of make new friends like that. And the first coming in as a first year is very so intimidating. But he did this to me, whatever. And I remember getting really upset about it. But then a few days in, saying to the guy beside me, he said, oh, he does that to me all the time. And he goes, yeah, he does to me as well. He's an idiot. Just ignore him. And as soon as they said that, I was like, oh, it doesn't matter if he does to me because it's not me. He does to this guy as well. And he seems normal. Um, do it to anybody. He hasn't got three heads. He hasn't got four noses. Nothing weird about it. Like, I, I, I'm kind of like, is there something wrong? Am I doing my hair? Like, yeah. Am I making myself stand out? You're trying, yeah. How do I change myself so I don't stand out? And you're going to go, oh, it's just him. And, you know, hurt people, hurt yeah. people. You know, it's something that happened to him and he thinks it's nice. And then I found out that three or four other people, a lot of the low-down blockers, like, oh, yeah, he does to me. All of them. So then we kind of gang up together. And the most important thing for, so is, is getting, having that sort of, you're not by yourself. You know, belonging. And, and belong to someone else, whatever. And then, and then, obviously, so if you tell someone, because obviously schools are blue in the face, saying, you know, if you're bullied, tell a teacher, tell a parent, whatever, and that's fine, whatever. But then you get to be the rat, ratting at your mates, whatever. But if you're telling a friend, yeah, if the friend goes, sure, whatever, that's not really your friend. You know, if you tell your friend, kind of goes, he does to me, whatever. And if you have enough of them like that, you feel part of a group, yeah. and then you kind of, and then even just even though the guy was still doing it to me, I was just like, it's more the psychological effect. The pain of the knee hit me in the back wasn't that bad. That goes away. Because it's not going to be, it's not going to be that vicious, yeah. Because he kind of goes, because obviously, if I'm in on the ground with a broken back, he's going to get expelled, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So it's going to be enough, just yeah. not like a dead arm, something you get, just like just yeah. enough to make you feel the pain, but not do it. But I was like, oh, when you take the psychological thing out, I'm like, I don't really care about him kneeing me in the back. I would, I'd be getting knee in the back because I feel like I'm a freak and I'm a weirdo and different and out there. But if I kind of, if you do it to everyone, I'm sure what difference does it make? It's grand. Yeah. And, that, and then a few weeks later, basically, a teacher sort of saw what was going on. I was like, right, cut that out whatever and you know swap lockers and all that sort of, and got the problem resolved and that was it but it was just that talking to someone else and you can do this in funny ways mm -hmm. I act out the bully and all this sort of stuff you know to do it um, um, yeah. and, and that's the thing and that, now that's obviously that's the push show which is about the bullying and all that sort of stuff but it's just I had that as part of the hack show and I was like no there's way too it's much stuff too here much, there's too yeah. much and the and they're two different topics they're two different topics of that. and also I kind of go well, like you know I kind of go instead of me trying to ram everything into an hour I, school's like look that was great can we get you next year I'm like yeah perfect and the problem I have is that I've done some schools twice so they've seen two shows. One school has booked me three times. So they're like, we've seen all your shows. You better get your new show in because, <laughs> because the kids, I thought, oh, I'll do a show once a year, you know, in the school, third, fourth, fifth and sixth class. And then after the four shows, all those kids have moved on to secondary school. And we just and we start and the book show again. Yeah. But now it's like, now, which is lovely that they're booking me more than I thought, which is great. But now it's like, I need to have the next show written. <laughs> but I don't mind because in my head, I'm, I've just been obsessed with screen time and anything to do with screens. So literally anything to do with like, and just trying to think different things I can sort of notice. Like for example, anytime you're on a screen, um, you're sitting down. Yeah. Okay. Whether you're, you know, watching TV, you're on a phone, whatever, you're not running, playing, whatever. So I was like, okay, so there's something bad about sitting down. So a lot of the thing is about like, sit, like humans are not meant to sit down. We've mm -hmm. only invented furniture a couple of thousand years ago. You know, we've probably got our hips and our knees. And our like brain that. is for to allow us to move. Yeah, exactly. All this yeah. sort of stuff, whatever. And I said, if you come from a culture, you know, um, the Indians, where you would have, you would be, you would do a lot of uh, sort of squatting on the. Yeah. They wouldn't use whatever. They, their hips and knees are fine because they're like, yeah, you're not meant to be sitting on a chair. You know, we had we, we had the, these rulers. You know, oh, the king has a chair. The leader of the tribe has a chair or a log he yeah. leans on, whatever. But not the peasants. You know, and then I was like, oh, I know, I can afford, I can make a chair, whatever. <laughs> and then like, and now everyone has a chair, and you're kind of like, that's ridiculous. Whatever. And I go, but bear in mind, you know, for, uh, for millions and millions of years, whatever, like humans or animals that looked like us or didn't have chairs, and it's only a relatively new thing. And now if you have a screen, you're you're looking at that, so you have to sit down. If you're in the cinema, if you're on this, if you're on a watch, any any screen like that. So I was like, okay, that's a side effect of being on a screen mm -hmm. is sitting down. So I kind of go, let's do something. You know, now you may go well, reading a book, you're sitting down as well. Mm -hmm. And I go, that's fine, but that and I, that's that's totally fine. So you need to do something which is active as well. And the other thing is about a load of schools. Like when I was in secondary school, I wasn't really into sort of. The school was very sort of rugby, sort of heavy, and I wasn't really into that. But a lot of schools, you sort of disappear if you're not into team sports, which is terrible because our kids aren't really into team sports, but they love sports, mm -hmm. okay? And schools are very sort of aimed at, I understand, for team sports because you want that camaraderie and the give and take, whatever. But if you're not into you know, GA, whatever, or different things like that, whatever, you kind of go, well, I guess you're just on your phone then, and you don't yeah. do that sort of thing, where it's like, no, like, my son loves like um, wall climbing, you know, that, that all that sort of stuff. And then he does, he does archery mm -hmm. and 
you know, art was, or yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But but these are, but like physical sports where you get like into a sweat, and okay, that's a, yeah. so it's an active thing. It's not just that you do something creative, but the fact that yeah. you could do stuff that will make you sweaty. You can be on a skateboard, or whatever, which is not really like, kind sport, of a communal yeah, thing. Yeah. It's maybe you do it with your friends or, but you do it by yourself. You learn trick by yourself. You know, you're not passing a skateboard. If you're on a team and you're passing a ball to someone yeah. else, you you have to practice that, whatever. But this is the thing, and I kind of go a lot of times. Like, I'm not really into football. I'm not really into rugby. Well, I just won't do any sport at all. Yeah. I'm going, there's so much stuff so that options. you can do that, and that's another thing with this with. I think that a lot of times, so we take the phone away and we take the gadgets away or the PlayStation away. Don't do that. What do I do? I do whatever, but don't do that. I'm like, if you fill the void with like cool options, yeah. that's it. You know, um, even like um, parkour, which is basically skateboarding without a skateboard, which is just basically you see a railing. I'm going to do a flip on that railing and jump around here. And you watch videos of starting in, in, in France of people just sort of showing off with their bodies. And my brother's big into skateboarding, you know, and you know he's like the fifty. He's not like he was, you know, huge when he was younger, or whatever. And he's just like, yeah, I still love it. And it's just that sort of being creative in a physical space. You're gonna go, oh, I grab a tree there, I swung off this and do that, and it's just making use of your. But the challenge and and, yeah. and boost to your self esteem and confidence. Exactly, and then you can, and then there's a lot of guys online who kind of go, oh, I'll do this here, but I'll do a backflip over there, and like they will spend months. Yeah. learning how to do a backflip and the friend's like no you did a backflip that's crazy how did you do that whatever and they go yeah I spent you know hours in my garden just doing this landing on cushions yeah. landing on cushions yeah, until I started they get doing it right. yoga now and I learned yeah. how to use my hands and stand my feet up yeah. and I totally broke my nose oh my god oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and my wrist I was just oh, no. oh, but I did it oh, okay. <laughs> so it does push you through yeah. pain and anything because like, it's that, that pride and, and yeah. challenge it's amazing yeah so that's so broke nose <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah maybe not break the nose yeah but that, that sort of idea where it's like yeah there are things you can do that don't involve a screen which are, and also bear in mind you know we live in Ireland okay the weather is miserable most mm-hmm. of the time and kids are like it's wet outside you know don't do that so they're going to go it's wet outside I'm just going to go on a screen and mm-hmm. so that's the thing where it's like no you know having a book or whatever and doing something like that I could do a whole show of, of just books you know but I mentioned that a few librarians like that I, I will book that in a heartbeat if you do that show I was like just give me a second of a million shows you know and like the next like after I've done the distract one which hopefully I'll have ready in a few weeks time like I already have plans for like the next like six seven shows in my head oh my because whenever I get an idea I go oh that's not good oh that'll be good in show number eight that'll be perfect yeah. and I, I see it, I see a clip from someone go that's really good and that'll go in there because previously it's like oh it doesn't really it's not relevant to the show I'm doing I've been it now it's like no no, no. and I, I have a, a, a random section where it's like here's random ideas I go that's really inspiring I heard that talk that's great I could use that for something I'll convert that so in nine does your brain ever stop it doesn't stop it's exhausting <laughs> yeah. it's exhausting it's exhausting so I get there and that's why it's funny because I do the show for an hour and uh, you know the teachers are just they're kind of like this guy talks an awful lot you know <laughs> but the pupils are on board because yeah. of the TikTok generation and they're like okay we have to really pay attention because this guy talks so fast you know and you get that sort of stuff on you you're kind of like I have 300 more questions to ask him you know but I asked him one and he's talking about half, you, know? That's my <laughs> you answered all of my questions all of my questions without, without, without <laughs> even knowing what's going on you know but I think but having that sort of that sort of sense of fun about it as well and also another thing which really bothers me even regards to kids entertainment at birthday parties is you know there's agencies out there where they basically hire some teenager to come in. They give them a weekend training at how to do balloon animals mm. and a bolt machine. And they go out there, whatever, and they're like, let's say, la, 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 la. And they do some sort of thing, whatever. And they kind of go, and they, in their eyes, they're going, this is great. I get more money than I would work at McDonald's here. Because mm. they're getting, but, you know, the, most of the money's McDonald's going. McDonald's pays really well. Oh, yeah, but, the, but, the, <laughs> but for an hour, but for an yeah, hour, yeah. you know, and, it's, I, and suddenly they're kind of going, I can get 100 quid. This is crazy. Yeah. I might get, for a, what would be a, mm. a menial job that yeah, we do yeah, working yeah. at a, 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 you know, low, low sort of pay job, they can do something like this. The person who set up the agency does that, and they sort of dial it in. And they're perfectly pleasant, whatever, but like if something goes wrong during the show or they got a boisterous child, they're like, I'm practically a kid myself, you know, and it's hard. And I remember seeing, <laughs> seeing a friend of mine I went to, uh, I think recently, and he said, there's a magician here, he said, he's brutal. And mm-hmm. I was like, why? As a, as a, you know, yeah, I won't mention any names, whatever. But he said, uh, he said, you know, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, yeah, I said, that guy hates kids, you know. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, why is he doing it? Because he thought it was cool when he was trying to start off. Now he has a mortgage and a family, okay. and he's paid bills, and he has an established business, whatever. But yeah, and some a lot of entertainers see sort of kids as a stepping stone to proper entertainment, which is adult entertainment. And they kind of they, oh, this kid stuff is like, oh, it's, it's and not, I've seen like some some. Magicians say to me, "I oh, well, that's all just cash gigs." Like, I would never put that on the books now. I'm like, "That's what what like oh yeah that it doesn't even count." Like it's either like oh that's just a little yeah, side yeah. thing. Where like the real yeah the yeah. real thing is like the adult stuff, and I do weddings, table table magic. No, I do all that sort of stuff. I'll go around yeah for adults table table magic and do close up stuff. That's fine. But the kids stuff I love, 
and also, you know, when you see me doing stuff, you kind of go, this guy really enjoys this, yeah. you know. Which you, and also, that's, well, that's why you're here today. Exactly. When I saw it, I was like, yeah. this is amazing. It's, it's, it's just yeah. like, I am dialing it in. I memorize the script. <laughs> no, today. I don't want to talk to you. I don't get paid for it. <laughs> <Yeah, exactly. laughs> and, and you forget the whole thing. Um, <laughs> exactly. So I think that can fashion. But also, I've had more than like three or four business type people come up to me going, this is this hack show. It is great. So this is the one even like franchise the idea. Mm. And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, well, like you can train people in and then you have the inconvenience of going around the country yeah. and doing the show. Yeah. And I was like, I don't understand. They're like, no, no, like this, I, 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 think I appreciate what you're doing, but like, but like it doesn't scale. And I kind of go, <laughs> yeah, I don't, this is not to scale. And they go, they're like, I don't understand. So, so but, and they kind of go, why would you do all these things when you could be at home and I'm like, in front of a computer at an office, not meeting all these kids? <laughs> and don't like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, all the stuff, whatever. And I said, I said, and he goes, but that's not a workable business model. I'm like, hang on, hang on. So I said, you don't, if you see, if Tommy Tiernan goes on tour, Tommy Tiernan doesn't pay a comedian to do his set mm -hmm. for him, okay? And he's like, well, that's different. I'm like, it's the exact same thing, whatever. I have a show that I'm really proud of, okay? And I got my hone and I work on it, whatever. And, uh, and also, I spent my entire life doing shows on the weekends when people are off work for birthday parties. Now, schools, it's only Monday to Friday. So I have enough shows now that occasionally I'm like, I can take a Sunday off, which I mm -hmm. never used to get. Or if I had a quiet weekend where there are no book, it's like, oh, about the old mortgage and stuff and now it's like i've got three sc uh, school shows this yeah. week i go into there you go in and you're so appreciated by the staff the kids are just dying to but see it's you. you yeah it's your it's, essence is the well show. that's it exactly so, so i kind of i don't want to scale this i don't want to franchise this ever i just need 281 schools you know <laughs> because only 281 days of the year you do that of course i made the fatal mistake about a month ago someone twisted my arm and said will you come and do a secondary school and i was like I, that, that's a different thing. I said, look, first years, just do first years because we, we, we saw your website and then we saw it says for primary school, please just do come and do first years. So I was like, okay, this will just be like a pilot, like a trial sort of thing. So uh -huh. anyway, so I did the thing, whatever. And like, it, well, as soon as I walked in, I, I'm imagining, you know, big 16 year olds with beards, you know, <laughs> and but I come in there and I'm like, it's just a gang of kids. Like yeah. they're just, I gotta go. And also if anything, first years so need this because primary school kids, when you're in sixth class, the you're, 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 the, yeah. you're, you're, the, you're the king, you're the boss. Yeah. If there's anyone bullying, it's a sixth, year, sixth mm -hmm. class bullying the young ones. Now you're in first class, you are the target of any bully because they're like, you don't know, the you don't know where the rope, you don't know where the, yeah, fresh <laughs> meat to be for the yeah. grinder, you know? So I said this, if anything, you know, what happens? You get bullied, it's like, well, there's a push show, you know, so, you get, so what you do, you spend way too much time on your phone, that's a social media, that's hack show, whatever, and now you're really upset, so now you need the well-being show to sort of get your head sort of, so I go, this is really relevant. So the guy was there and he goes, who wants him to go back? And they're like, yeah. Hey. Yeah, exactly. great. So then he just told all of his friends because he's a librarian and librarians network like are amazing. So now I have like secondary schools booking me. And can you do fifth year? I'm like, I'm not doing fifth year. <laughs> I said, I will do first year. I said, the show, I, took, I performed the show with the first class. It's not, I can't have a show that is relevant to first class and 60 year students. Okay? Yeah. Also, I think fifth and sixth year, the horn has left the barn at that point. I think really, you're not like, you shouldn't have a phone. They're like, when you get off, the guy is <laughs> a foot taller than me, you know, and can beat me up. So but I go, it's still the awareness. Like, it helped yeah. me now when I'm swiping. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's I'm like, dopamine, ah! And yeah. we have dopamine tolerance as well. I yeah. discovered that if we use it all in the morning, we pick up our phone in the morning, yeah. we use a bottle of our dopamine tolerance, so that yeah. nothing is exciting enough and good enough during the no. day. No, yeah. So I'm like, oh, no, he's I, hacked yeah. my brain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it's just, so I kind of go... I, I, I was there and I, my friend was like, but there's 730 secondary schools. I go, yeah, but there's three and a half thousand primary I'm schools. Not sure, it's just I, only one I, only, I, only, I only need a tenth of them, a tenth of them. You know, I, I, I can't even do, a, if a tenth want to book me, I can't do that. I can't mm -hmm. fit in a tenth of schools, you know. Obviously, you know, I live in Kildare, so I'm trying to, advertise to places near me first yeah. of all I will happily drive to Cork or go like to further, places further afield yeah but having schools around here yeah having schools around here is going to hand you in to be home and do that you know so that was this, this guy was just angry about it. I want you to have to franchise the idea <laughs> and I was like no because he's this obsession with business where it's like I come up with a great business idea and then I step away and then that just works and mm -hmm. then I go back to sitting in my office just yeah. clicking and I go I don't want to be in an office all What's day point, yeah. I spend enough time emailing schools making uh, telling them about the show and, uh, and then you know, at what time do I want to be there and making double checking the address and Google Maps mm -hmm. all sort of stuff because I'm in a different venue every day of the week I have to make all that stuff so I have enough time in the office I don't need more time in the office I want to be at these places mm -hmm. doing it like that and then after COVID I just want to be busy COVID was just like when they when they if someone had said to me before COVID um, an event so big is going to happen that every single one of your shows for a year will be cancelled but not one person will ring to cancel I'd be like, what, like World what? War Three? Like, what event would yeah. that be? And then the head paediatrician comes on RT News, 
when the COVID started and said all kids' birthday parties for the next year need to be cancelled. And my wife's like, that is not good. And then literally the diary just empties. And, yeah. yeah, and I the first show that I was meant to do that Saturday, I ran the person and said, sorry, are you expecting it? Like, I don't not show up for a show. Like, I don't let people down. I'm very particular about making sure of timing and I don't, I leave lots of time between shows. I'm yeah. never late to shows. I'm very, I'm very particular about that. And I said, I, you're not expecting on um, Saturday. She's like, no, no, have you not heard? It's the end of the world. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I said, you know, I said, do you live in you a 2K? You won't even be here. <laughs> yeah, do, do you live in a 2K of my house? I live in Dublin. I said, no, I live in Kildare. She goes, look, I'll see you in a year or whenever this nonsense blows <laughs> over or whatever. And that was it. Yeah. So then it was, so I just, so I, I didn't ring anyone else. And, I, and every time I felt like I should be ringing this person, I should be showing up, whatever. And my wife's like, there's nothing. It's all gone. Yeah, you just know? don't hope. Yeah. So now I kind of go, I'm just happy so to be busy. So grateful and appreciative. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is great. And then, if, and then if needs be, you know, if it gets too busy with the, the show, whatever I kind of go that's fine I can ease back on the weekend yeah. sort of performance and there's times a year like communions in May are like I, I already have bookings for next May you wow. know at the moment uh, when we're recording this it's October you know and there's certain days where it's like yeah that's gone already because they cannot change the date it has to be that date because that's the day of the communion and I can mm. do maybe five one hour shows in a day I once okay. did six which is crazy at the end yeah I sit down there and I'm and my wife's like are you okay I'm like, she's like, me sit down. I've done a lot of talking today I'm very tired here I sit down here whatever so having that's a very intense day so with this doing lots of shows but spreading it over through Monday to Friday yeah. is lovely you know and then you get a bit of your weekend I know it's for such a good cause as well but that's it as well yeah it's it's nice having it. and, then, and then a school will go listen can you do something on this so someone yeah. like the next show is going to be a whole thing about sort of fake news and which ties again with phones and social media it's another aspect I it's, think that should all become a subject in the school yeah like you it, can't do one hour like you can't learn all you need to learn in one hour a year or two years you yeah, know, two, show, two hour show. I thought what, we, what my funny my premise for the show. I don't think I pulled this off, but I thought it would be very funny if I go in to teach students, primary school students, about you know not to believe everything on the internet, mm. but to go in and basically lie to them for an hour. Okay, everything I say is untrue, and and I'm saying now C.S. Lewis once said, and I bring a quote, show the quote like that, and it's just a quote that like I made up, and then I kind of go, he didn't say that. And you go, what? You go, yeah. I said that. You need to check your sources. You need yeah. to check. And the, all the, I saw this teenager and the video of that, and he said, this, this, never. No, he didn't. He's, he's, just, he's just an idiot. He's, yeah. he, just, he just made up something on top of his head. Okay, you can't believe something. Yeah. Yeah, and this is how it trends are. Someone's like, well, everyone wears these runners. And you're like, no, you wear the runners, and you're getting money from the guy who sells the runners. And now all the teenagers are like, we have to get these runners. And they're rubbish. And, they, and like, why? What? Like, and people go, I want to Wikipedia. I kind of go, my granny can change Wikipedia. Mm. You know? So, yeah, you, it's not an encyclopedia. You know? Now, you may want, you can probably trust most stuff because why would someone put malicious information on Wikipedia? You have to understand people's motivations for that. But I love the idea of just going and just lying to kids. Yeah. I never, I never sort of, I say something and the kids go, "That's not true." I go, "Very good, you got that." Okay, and have a whole thing about that. And that would be, that could be a whole show about everything from like even with books. Just look at the book. Like, what way is the author writing this? And I think what you do is really powerful stuff, you know? as well for teachers to, yeah. to show teachers how children learn. Yeah. And that you can't just tell them things. You yeah. have to show them and all the props you use and, and all the experiencing and questioning and engagement. Yeah. That's how they should learn in a class. I think so. And also, I try and get as many emotions into the show. Like, it, it sounds weird, but, you know, you can sit there trying to study something, but I guarantee the time you got embarrassed in the canteen when you were in first year because you stood in the wrong place and everyone's mm -hmm. like, eh, dummy, why are you standing there? Yeah. And you go, oh, sorry. And you'll never forget yeah. that because you're embarrassed. And people tie emotions to memory. Yeah. So if I can make the kids feel something during the show... So obviously, I don't. I want you to feel upset. Are you crying? I, mean, I don't. I don't want that to happen. And I have to be very careful where if I'm doing experiments with bringing kids up, because I only want to bring a kid up who puts their hand up as well mm -hmm. to make sure I don't want to upset anyone. Because it's not. What, there's no point if I make a point and I get someone upset, you know. Yeah. And I, I just you know, I hope and pray that you know stuff I've done, whatever, and response has been very good for people. But I'm, if anything, I kind of go. I just I need to improve that a little bit and just change a little bit like that and to have it come up. So if I have something where I go, I'm going to make this person, like I have one experiment with this, to do with peer pressure. And what I do is I have 10 kids come up and I give them a piece of paper. And on the piece of paper, it just says, when Ruben says apple, sit down. When he says banana, stand up. Okay. And I say, no, you're not looking at the bit of paper yet. Okay. It's got an instruction on it. You look at it now. Okay, you look at it for 10 seconds. You remember it. They go, yeah, this is easy. Okay, great. Put it away. And then I go, pineapple. Okay. And nobody moves. You know, and cabbage, nobody moves over. And then I say, you know, apple, and everybody sits down. Okay. And I go, one of you was given a different instruction. Okay. Um, and the kid yeah. on the very end, okay, they were told, if you say banana, do the opposite. Okay. But they sit down because they see nine friends Everybody. sitting down and sit down. And they kind of go, oh, I'm an idiot. I got it wrong. And they sit down. I said, nobody wants to feel stupid. 
And if your friends are doing something, if they're bullying someone else, you don't feel stupid and not be bullying you'll somebody, in. you'll join in like that. And that's it. And I said, now, sometimes in school, the person says standing up and I go, it doesn't happen very often, but I go, fair play to you. I said, you've got your own personality. And even though nine people sat down, you stood up and she's like, I knew I was right. You go, very good. And I said, here's the weird thing. They've done experiments where they will bring someone into a room and they'll have two circles on a wall, one clearly bigger than the other one. And I've asked 10 people, which one is bigger, A or B? And everyone goes, A, it's twice the size or get like that. Then they'll bring a person in with nine actors and the nine actors will go, B is bigger. And the person will go, 70% of the time will say, B is bigger, even though it's clearly smaller, yeah. okay? And they were like, and the person after go, why did they go, I, I just, I thought I got the instructions wrong or something. I just want to make a big and scene and that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, but all they have to do is get one of the actors to tell the truth, okay? It's just one, even though the so one says, oh yeah, A is bigger, eight of them say nine is bigger the other person will go no eight is bigger okay and the point to get across that if if your friends are bullying someone you don't have to bring a gang of your friends over if you just say i oh, guys leave me alone here come on let's do something else you do if one person is a dissenting voice against the gang you could dispel they say like 70 percent of people will, will change their mind and will go with the one person and not go with the crowd if they hear even one person do that and so that's a very powerful because you go, I'm just a six year old kid. I'm going to go, and there's 10 people in here. I go, yeah, but if you are the one person who says, oh, guys, don't be mean. Why don't we do this instead? They'll just go, oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah. We're being mean. And that's it. And, then, and most of them will just stop doing it. Because no one wants to be on their own. And, and, and they go, why would you? And they go, because people love copying people. Mm -hmm. And why do we first of Because people love to spot differences. And why do we spot differences? Because thousands of years ago in the jungle, if we see something move, we go, Survival. It's, it's, either, it's either an animal I might be able to eat. So if I don't, if I not move quick, I'll miss. I won't eat and I'll die. Or it's an animal that wants to eat me. Okay. So we have to we spot differences. So if someone goes, someone looks different than us. We spot differences straight away, and unfortunately, we focus on that, mm. and then we say something trying to be funny. And we find safety on that as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And then safety in numbers, whatever. Yeah. But then if you start doing something nasty, you know, just one person just go, guys, this isn't cool. That's all you have to say. It has to be like, guys, I don't think we should do this. Like it's really, we're really you have to be that annoying, sort of nagging person. And even sometimes, you know, if if there's a pressure from someone to do something. You know, I say, just suggest something else. Just put it off. Just going to go, no, 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 at the moment. That's it. Because they'll yeah. just forget. They don't care. Yeah. You, know, uh, you know, and I just say, <laughs> I say to us, you know, hey, we're going to jump off the school roof. And you're kind of going, oh, okay, that's not a good <laughs> idea. And you're going to go, well, actually, hang on. We're going to go down to, go down to the playground. We're going to go on the on the, um, the, 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 the roundabout thing. We're going to spin around that 10 times. And then we see who can run the furthest without falling oh, over. Yeah. Okay. And everyone, oh, that sounds class. Just give them something else. People, yeah. most of the time, it's just the, the idle hands, you know, yeah. devil's work, yeah. whatever. And they're just like, oh, we're going to jump off the roof. Why? Because they've nothing better to do. Yeah. We take away the phone. What are we going to do? We're going to vandalize white because we've nothing better to do. Yeah. So it's like just have something to do. Come up with a plan and do that, and you know, that can help out yeah. as well. Yeah, and it know? takes practice. But again, yeah. that cycle. If they're on their phones, they're not developing their creativity, yeah. and they're in that cycle. So just yeah. it'll take time, but it's worth it. Yeah, definitely. And, that, and certainly with the phone, like like during COVID when it got really bad and like the shows were just, I was doing a couple of Zoom shows, which I absolutely loved because I'm an absolute yeah. nerd and I loved all that sort of stuff. And people were so glad to have something mm. over nothing. And um, But I actually, at one point, it was kind of like, I think I might actually need to pack this in because I thought if COVID was just going to go on indefinitely, I'm like, mm. I don't know if I'm going to be in a room with a room full of strangers again, you know, yeah. everything might be online. So I said the second thing, as good as coding and stuff, so I, said, I started joining in coding sort of uh, schools wow. and stuff. And they said, there's three things we're looking for potential employees, okay, because it's a sort of an apprenticeship you do. And the least important thing is like, are you good at what you, at the job, whatever, because we can train anyone to do mm -hmm. pretty much anything within reason, okay? The second most important thing is, are you enthusiastic? They can be a guy who knows much, but you are way more enthusiastic. You don't know as much as him, but we just know yeah. that you will really get into this. And the most important thing is, can you work with other people? Yeah. Can you have a conversation? Can you talk to other people? Because you can be an absolute genius, but if you can't look someone in the eye, mm -hmm. if you can't kind of go, oh, yeah, are you okay? You look upset, whatever, or do something like that, whatever. And the problem now is that everybody is on their phones. There's no small talk anymore. At the bus stop, it's just five people being really entertained by their device at a, at a doctor's waiting room. And the same and the thing is people go, oh, it's just for kids. So the same with adults. People don't chat. You get an elderly person there chatting away and looking around going, I want to chat to, you know. And that this is what companies want for potential 
kids, mm. you know, for potential employees in the future, is that we want someone to work as a team. We don't want someone like a robot because yeah. we can hire an AI to do that. We need yeah. somebody friendly. If an AI is now friendly than the humans, you know, I can crack jokes, whatever. <laughs> That's a bit scary, you know, as a joke earlier on, but we wanted AIs to clean our toilets. Now yeah. AIs are writing poems for us. Yeah. We're like, no, no, we don't want AIs to be creative. Yeah. We want AIs to do menial tasks. And like, no, no, I'll write a novel. And I'll come on. And they're like, no, you're just <laughs> you'll replacing. Clean my toilet. Yeah, yeah, you're replacing you'll like. Clean my toilet. Yeah, yeah, you're going to replace all the crummy jobs, not all the really cool ones, you know. Yeah. So it's funny how it's going. Yeah. Start coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thank you so much. Thanks, that was what, 11 hours? Maybe, 11, 11, hours. <laughs> 11 hours on the dot. I, I swore. <laughs> I, swore I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't go one second over 11 hours. Yeah, exactly. So what's the next project finishing your, fir your fourth show? So fourth show, yeah. You booked is, out every day of it, the year? It's just, it's just, so that'll be a couple of weeks. So I'm hoping I get that one out. And then I said, I like, on my website, like whenever I go to school, I kind of say, look, I'll put you on a little mailing list here. And they go, please don't send us lots of emails. Like, like it's whenever I write a show, I guarantee yeah. you'll be more. Uh, you'll get two emails a year. It's not, and it'll be me going to have a brand new show. I don't have show. that much time to be sending emails anyway. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> I do that. So that other show is one that one about like um, not trusting your sources, and that, and another one is I want to have one about going viral on the internet. Everybody wants to be viral on the internet until they're viral on the internet, and it's something they don't want to be viral for. And that's what people. Oh, I got this cool picture. Oh, that picture made oh, on the oh. internet, and just to show because kids have this idea that. Influencers are making a fortune on the on the line point of all waffling and not many people. And their mental health is so All that sort of stuff yeah. as well. Yeah. So the, and I have ones on addictive things and months can you do green schools? I have all the sort of stuff. It'll be for the next few years. I've I've million ideas in my head forever, so I won't be stuck for ideas. And the schools yeah. can say, Will you do this for me? I'm mm. like, Yeah, yeah, just go onto my website, give me an idea for something, give me a bit of time to mm. get it worked out and do that, you know, and that's it. Amazing. And, and, that's and one piece of advice you'd give to anyone listening? Um, let me parents, see. Let's see, parents, teachers. Yeah, it's home. just, I think, certainly, with regards to the technology, I said, if you can start young, with, uh, you know, start as young as you can, there's no, there's no too young age, and just get, just kind of say the phrase, you know, phones are for teenagers. I think it's just a simple thing, just to kind of say, oh, yeah, when you're, when you're a teenager on the phone, as opposed to that, even though the kid may blatantly know friends who are, you know, 10 and have mm -hmm. phones, you kind of go, the assumption is it's that. And if enough people do that and say, Oh, when you're a teenager, you get the phone, whatever, um, and if we start off young, whatever, literally, mm -hmm. what, four or five years from now, we could sort of push that through, yeah. and, and it, would, it would make a huge difference. I know it, it goes back to secondary school, they're back down on the phones again, but we can, we'll wor worry about primary school first. they will be more aware. They'll be more aware of that, and, yeah. and every, every day, it, your, the, your child's brain gets a bit more developed, yeah. so it's able to cope with that. And if and they then, had the childhood that they need to have, yeah. then they'll be able to understand. Exactly, exactly. If they get to play with all that yeah. sort of stuff, yeah, yeah and do that, and it, it makes such a difference. So definitely, yeah, just... Assume the, uh, the phones are for teenagers, yeah. and if you have a fifth or sixth pupil who has a phone, that's fine. That the horse is at the barn, but just be mindful of all that sort of stuff. And know? be confident in those boundaries exactly. and, exactly. and rules. Yes. And, and get me to come to your school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Thank Cheers. You. It was really, it was really good fun and um, brilliant. Definitely. Thank Cheers. you. Thanks.